Hey everybody, Sean here again. I've got another OWK hilt to show you. Now this is a very special one. This has some custom accuracy modifications that have not been done before. So I will get on into that in a minute, but first let's go over the specs. This is running a Nano Biscotti V3. It has a Tri-Cree Royal Blue, Royal Blue White LED. It has an 18650 3400 milliamp battery from the Custom Saber Shop. And it also has a 2 watt 28 millimeter bass speaker, which was, which is generally not something that will fit in one of these hilts. You have to make some custom modifications, which I will show you uh, in a little while. But uh, first of all, let's go into what makes this hilt so accurate. Now this is a commission for Steve from Maryland, who contacted me after seeing one of my other videos a few months ago. And uh, we briefly discussed creating this saber for him. And the idea with it was to make it as accurate to the prop as a Corbent OWK kit can be. And I feel that we've achieved that. So let's go into it and uh, I'll just start at the bottom. So the first thing is the pommel. If you look here, notice there are no holes in the pommel for the sound to come out of. And also notice the cubes. They're not straight cut. Those are tapered. So these are actually the pommel cap here and these cubes are both designed by Ace Rocket and you can buy these at the custom saber shop. You can get the tapered cubes right now and from what I understand these solid pommel caps uh, Tim's gonna make those available soon in the custom saber shops website and let me just say right now a huge thank you to Tim for being willing to help me with this project because I know it was very unusual um, all these requests you know that the powder coating and everything there's not things usually he does so I'm really grateful to him for being willing to work with me on this and for turning out such a nice result, honestly. He does such a great job on the powder coating. Um, I'm very impressed. So thank you again to Tim. All right, so let's continue to talk now. We've got, we've covered the pommel, all right, and let's go up to the emitter. Ah, notice what's going on at the emitter here. All right, so this normally would not have uh, if you notice the edge here, see how thin that is? This has been lathed out. Tim did that for me, um, and the reason he did that was to accommodate this fender washer, which you can see in there. That's a real fender washer, one and a half inch, and uh, steel rod insert. So this emitter piece acts as basically as the blade plug, right? A nice accurate looking to the prop blade plug. Whereas the other emitter piece, um, if you've seen my other OWK videos, you'll know how I set these up. I always put the set screw inside there on the threads in order to hide it, all right? So this is the one that you use, and of course I have a short little demo blade installed, but you can put the full size one in whenever you want. And uh, that's how you get your blade running, right? But when you don't have the blade in there, you just want this thing on display, this is what you use. And um, it, it's, it's great for a nice static emitter. It looks just like the original prop and um, I'll put in some screenshots, some HD screenshots so you can see a little bit better what I'm talking about. If you look at the emitter in the bottom left, you can see how there is that, that thin lip around the edge of the emitter and inside of it is there that flat area. That is the fender washer. And now it's a little difficult to see it in this picture, but I have another picture I'll show you in a minute um, that you can actually really see that steel rod. And that's how this prop was built. It was assembled um, around this, uh, from what I measured, a 3 eighths of an inch steel rod. And all the aluminum parts were custom machined and assembled onto that. So. So that was one thing it was nice to be able to get done for the emitter. Now, while we're looking at this picture, I'd like to draw your attention to a few other things. Take a look at the black areas. Notice uh, the finish, right? It's definitely paint, and uh, you can tell because it looks a little bit matte, but it also, you can see where the oils from the actor's hands have actually made that paint a little bit shinier, especially in the main grip area. See how it's sort of reflecting the light? And this picture also shows us the taper on the pommel cubes. If you look closely, you can see that. So overall, this is a very nice screenshot. It gives us a really good idea of the proportions of the saber, um, although you can't really see details like the bike valve too well. But there are reference pictures for that. So moving on. Okay, so here's a really nice reference photo. 
And this tells us multiple things. So just to continue talking about the emitter, here you can really see that fender washer a lot better. And you can also actually make out the outline of that steel rod around which the Sabre was built. So this is the photo that I used to scale that steel rod with um, basically using my calipers with known dimension of the one and a half inch fender washer. That's how I got three eighths of an inch for the steel rod. Now also again to talk about the paint here's further evidence that it is paint because you can actually see where it's chipped a bit the paint has chipped at those first two ribs right underneath the emitter in the black section. Now, aside from that, this also gives us a very good shot of the LED bezels and how they have almost no lip on them. They just, it's a very sharp angle, that edge where the LED bezel meets the body of the saber. And that's been, that's kind of tricky to find. All the LED, the real chrome LED bezels that I've found they do have a little bit of a lip. Now it's certainly an improvement over the stock pieces that come with the OWK kit, but uh, I have yet to find something that looks 100% in that regard to my eyes. Uh, also look here, you can see really nicely in this picture, you can see the both the blanking cap, which is that red knob on the left, and the Presta valve, the brass knob on the right, and you can make out the knurling on them, right? So it's very clear that the, the blanking cap has that internal knurling and the knurling on the brass valve is much more, I don't know, diagonal. I don't really know how to describe it, but uh, that's just how it looks to me. Then um, most of the Presta valves that are readily available on the market, it took me a long time to find ones that actually had that, what looks to me to be the exact same kind of knurling. All right. Now, if you are, have seen some of my other videos, you'll know that A, this is my favorite hilt, and I'm a big fan of accuracy. So I like using the real Presta valve here with the right kind of knurling, and I also like using real LED bezels. So I'll bring that in so you can see it. All right, now the LED inside, this is a real LED, and um, while, it, while I did was I sanded the surface with a real fine grit sandpaper to make it look a little hazy because on the real prop what they did was they took these LEDs and they just grinded them down flat all right originally the LED was domed here okay and they just ground that down so I wanted to make it as representative of that as I could and um, I think it turned out pretty nicely now these are not shine through okay I painted the back of them silver and then on the other side of the silver I put some black paint to totally block out any of the light coming from the the LED inside and the reason that was done was because, again, prop accuracy, right? In the movie, uh, these LEDs don't light up, okay? Minor detail, but that's uh, just how it was, all right? So that's how I did that, and uh, this is a Nano Biscotti, again, and this is your activation, which we'll get into in a few minutes. The inside of the Presta valve here has a, a purple a Hemi insert, which is just a plastic button that I get printed from Shapeways. And you'll notice it also has the O-ring, all right? Now, the thing with the O-ring on the Presta valves is in some of the reference pictures, it almost looks like the O-ring could be there, but the, the best reference picture we have of this valve on the prop, if you it shows you actually that there is a, the inner threaded section, the inner threaded section is right there rather than uh, there being an O-ring. So that is maybe one detail that um, in the future, I'd like to get um, even more accurate. I'd like to do my own run of these and, and nail that down really well. But be that as it may, again, there are some reference pictures which it kind of looks like there's an O-ring. So maybe, I don't know, maybe if they made multiples of these props, maybe they made multiple heroes. Maybe one of them wasn't ground down. And one of them did have a, a the O-ring in it. Okay, so a minor detail, but the cool thing is it has the right knurling, it has the right profile, and it's real. So that's that adds a nice touch to the Sabre. Uh, other real things we got. Okay, so this one's easy, but hey, Phillips screw and uh, cover tech, right? So nothing, nothing too crazy there. Alright, but just looking at this hilt, I mean, I just love this thing. This is, 
again, as accurate as you can make one of these, I think the only thing that's more accurate is, is Ace Rocket's complete OB, Obi-Wan replica, which, uh, you know, is, is, a, is a beautiful looking replica. It's just a little hard to get, all right? So this is more accessible for a wider majority of people because it's readily available. All right, so let's go ahead and throw a blade in here. I'll show you the function of the saber and let you hear it. And then we'll, then I'll open it up. I'll open up the pommel and show you what I did in order to accommodate that bass speaker. Okay, so here's the inside of the emitter. So you can see royal blue, royal blue, white. The reason for that is if you look at Phantom Menace, Obi-Wan saber has a very nice deep blue color. Um, and that's what the royal blue gives you. It gives you that deep, sort of uh, neon looking blue. Whereas the regular blue is brighter, yes, it's a little bit brighter, but it's also lighter in color and it has more of an icy kind of electric blue. Okay, so uh, there, you know, you can't go wrong with either. It's all in what your preferences are, right? For a nice um, Luke A&H Sabre, I'd probably want the standard blue. And for, I don't know, an Obi-Wan, a new hope saver like this one, like the one I'm currently working on, that one I'll probably go with the royal blue, unless I decide to do something else. <clears throat> Neo Pixel Blade. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so yeah, let's fire this up and I'll let you see what it looks like. It's not about the mission master, it's something elsewhere. Elusive. Okay, boot sound. This is Fates by Mad Cow. <laughs> I don't know if you can see too well on camera the deeper blue color that it has. Yeah. But it is very nice. It is a very nice blue. The two odd bass speaker is vented right through the grip here. So that that's what made it possible to use the solid pommel cap and um on one of my other builds, I used a rectangular speaker. It's the same one that Ace Rocket, I believe, uses in his his version. And he also vents it through the grip like this. But this two-eyed bass speaker definitely beats that speaker. It sounds deeper, obviously, and it's, it's louder, has better resonance. Um, because in here, there's actually a resonating chamber of probably about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. Because the bass speaker is located right here. So it's venting through this, this, and this. These first, mainly these first three grooves, but also the fourth one I have open for it. And um, yeah, I mean, for a prop accurate Obi-Wan hilt that you have to vent this, this, this sound out through the grip, I mean, that's really, right now, I think the best speaker that you're gonna get in there. So, so that turned out really well. The uh, purple Hemi is just regular, it's just a purple pearl metallic paint. This is the kind of paint I use. This was actually given to me by by Steve. And um, yeah, that looks really nice. So thank you very much, Steve, for that. Okay. So let's deactivate. Okay, so um, we're close to wrapping up here now, but uh, let me go ahead and take this blade off and put the regular emitter back in, the static emitter, and then I'll crack this thing open for you and show you how it fits together. All right, so just screw that back in there. All right, okay, now, in order to, to look at the inside of this, all you do is just grip this, and what I like to do is push on the bottom and pull pull on this part because you don't want to just pull on the cubes and this is a note for Steve don't just pull the cubes to spin it right because those cubes are just they're just being uh, compressed by the top and bottom pommel pieces right and in order to reassemble it you know you have to play around with it a little bit to get it to time right and um, you know that's how that works but when you go to unscrew it when you first take it apart after it's been tightened down don't pull on those cubes because I don't want you to risk having those sharp edges down in there. Maybe scratch that powder coat on that pommel there. So just grip the whole thing as one piece. And then then once it comes loose, then you can start just using the cubes. All right. <clears throat> so we'll unscrew this. Okay, now you can see here. All right, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see. There we go. 
All right, you can see how this all fits together. All right, uh, yeah, a little bit of cram foo involved with this one. So here was our, uh, here's our 2.1 millimeter switchcraft recharge jack. There's our Nano Biscotti kind of underneath the mess of wires there. And for SD card access, access, you just push your thumb in there and that pops out, right? Okay, push that in and pops back in. And then you just kind of compress it together. When you want to reassemble it, you just put it in and just wiggle it on there and then it's good. It freely rotates. It doesn't get snagged or anything. So it works just fine. All right, so yeah, again, here's the recharge port and the, and the soundboard which the soundboard had to be located down here. There, although there's plenty of room up in the other part of the hill, the 18650 is all the way up here. Um, it was important to put the soundboard on the other side of the cover tech here so that when you take the pommel off, you have easy access to it if you want to change fonts or the config files, you know, you want to change your preferences and such. You always have to plan the hilt so that you have access to that in an easy way afterwards. Okay, so... That's basically how it works. Now let's show you where the bass speaker goes in here. All right, because if you're a sabersmith and you know, if you ever worked on one of these hilts, you know how difficult it would be to try and get that speaker in here unless you come up with some different solution, right? Usually the only speaker that would fit would be, would be your uh, 20 millimeter, right? Okay, let's zoom out. Okay, so now this whole outer shroud piece just slides off, and there we go. Now you can see the guts of this thing a little better. All right, so there's the base speaker, which has been cut. Um, that main grip area has been cut in order to accommodate that, and then that just has some nice, um, it's just some hot glue, basically just holding it in there, to keeping it from bouncing around. And um, yeah, that's really how it works. Okay. Just hit the uh, on button by accident. Alright, so let's get this reassembled now. Okay, there's our screw. Okay, tighten that down. Scoop this all up. Okay, and screw this back on. And again, when you're reinstalling the pommel after taking the thing off, you have to play around with it a little bit to get that timing. Like say, oh, you know, you just went too far, right? See how that's a little bit past? What you can do is loosen up the bottom pommel cap and then these will freely slide. And then if you just carefully tighten that pommel cap to a point where that those cubes start to stick, and then you can tighten it a little bit more and then you can clock that, clock those cubes into place. All right, it's just something you have to play around with a little bit. Okay. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, again, I believe that no one else has done these kind of accuracy modifications. I don't know if anybody's as much of an accuracy nut as I am with these things, but um, you know, the finished result is great. And uh, Steve told me he's, he's um, been waiting since 1999 for this Sabre. And uh, I can tell you, you know, I was um, I was still a kid in 1999, and uh, me too, man. You know, I've been waiting my whole life to build one of these uh, these Obi Wan Phantom Menace hilts like this. It's just my favorite design, and um, seeing it totally takes me back to that summer. And you know, I remember spending hours outside dueling with those old plastic, um, you know, lightsabers in the front yard uh, with my friend Jesse, and we do that. Pretty much every night for hours all summer long there back in 1989 so so it's funny how these things have these these kind of sentimental attachments you know but um, but all in all it's a great prop it works it works really well and um, again thank you very much to Tim at the custom saber shop and uh, yeah onward and upward I'll keep you guys posted about these uh, valves and once I get my lathe and um, keep looking for ways to just make these things better and better. I will say right now that Steve has said he's interested in converting this maybe later on to a uh, a NeoPixel blade so that it would have that ignition retraction effect 
Now that's something that I currently don't have any experience with, but I'm hoping to get into that within, well, this summer. So that's something to look for. Uh, I know personally, I would like to build one of these just like this for myself, but I would really like a crystal focus in it because that's, that's just the best of the best. And um, I already know exactly how I would do the aux switch because it would just be this purple button and you just mount the, um, you just you need to get a 3D printed ring to mount the momentary switch on underneath in there. And then you just use that purple hemi button inside just to press on that switch underneath. But those are just ideas for the future. So in the meantime, this was a great build. It was a lot of fun as always. And thank you very much to Steve for making it possible. All right, may the force be with you. Take care.